Hi, I'm Bob Swirsel. We're going to walk Section 2 of the Seattle Olmsted 50 route from Woodland Park Zoo to Husky Stadium. Let's go. We start at Woodland Park Zoo in the Finney Ridge neighborhood of Seattle, Washington. The neighborhood gets its name from Guy Finney, a Canadian real estate developer who bought the land here in 1889 and used some of it for a wildlife park that would eventually become Woodland Park Zoo. We'll use one of the handful of pedestrian bridges to get across State Road 99, Aurora Avenue. It cuts Woodland Park in half, and the decision to build it was controversial, even back in the 1930s. We're walking Section 2 of the Seattle Olmsted 50, a route created by the Mountaineers a non-profit organization founded in 1906, teaching outdoor skills, leading adventures in nature, and advocating to conserve natural lands. The Seattle Olmsted 50 runs 31 miles, 50 kilometers, from the Ballard Locks to Rainier Beach Playfield, and highlights parts of the 1903 Olmsted Park Master Plan. We're going from Woodland Park Zoo to Green Lake, Ravenna, and the University of Washington, ending at Husky Stadium. The route is about 6.5 miles or 10.3 kilometers in length, with an elevation gain of about 266 feet or 81 meters. Reaching Green Lake, we can see remnants of the grandstand from the historic Green Lake Aqua Theater, built for Seafair in 1950, along with the construction of a new boathouse. The lake was originally called Dwitlush by the Duwamish people. It was fed by spring water from Lictid, meaning red-colored or painted, now called Lichten Springs, which has long been a sacred place for indigenous people. We'll use the Green Lake Inner Loop, a very popular route for walking, biking, and rolling. As part of the Olmsted plan, the lake was lowered by 7 feet in 1911 to create park space. You can see the old shape of the lake on a map by looking at the roads surrounding Green Lake. As we leave Green Lake, there's a curious arch on display outside the community center. This arch is from an old building on the shore of Lake Washington near Brighton Beach that was used by the Martha Washington School for Girls from 1920 to 1971 before it was eventually demolished. We're now following the former path of Ravenna Creek, which used to run from Green Lake all the way to Union Bay on Lake Washington. When Green Lake was lowered, it caused the creek to dry up, and the creek bed was filled to create Ravenna Boulevard.
Entering Ravenna Park, we finally catch a glimpse of Ravenna Creek. The Ravenna Park Bridge was built in 1913 and provides treetop views for those who cross it. It's been car free since 1975, when the city closed the bridge to vehicles for a four month trial period, and it was determined that renovating the bridge to handle arterial traffic was too expensive. This section of Ravenna Creek was previously diverted into the city's sewer system back in 1948. In the 1990s, thanks to efforts from groups like the Ravenna Creek Alliance, a project was started to bring the creek back to the surface, a process called daylighting. The project was completed in 2006, and 850 feet of Ravenna Creek was brought back to the surface. The rest of the creek now flows through a pipe directly into Union Bay, mimicking its original route. We've been walking for a while now, and I'm getting hungry, so we'll stop at Seven Coffee Roasters Market and Cafe. This building was built in 1916 and has housed a neighborhood grocery store ever since 1922. Seventeenth Avenue Northeast, formerly known as University Boulevard, was originally intended in the Olmsted plan to connect the University of Washington to Woodland Park. It's lined with houses from UW's Greek Row, which have been here since early parts of the 20th century. Entering the University of Washington, we pass by Denny Hall, built in 1894 to 1895, the oldest building on campus. While walking through the UW campus, you should definitely pay a visit to Suzzalo Library, opened in 1927 and called the Cathedral of Books. Approaching Drumheller Fountain, you can almost imagine what the area looked like during the Alaska-Yukon Pacific Exposition of 1909. The Olmsted brothers designed the layout for the expo, and it can still be seen in the modern design of the UW campus. Hidden in this grove are the university columns, the only pieces remaining from the original Territorial University of Washington building. The building was constructed in 1861 in downtown Seattle along University Street, where the Olympic Hotel now stands. By the way, that's how University Street got its name. It wasn't just meant to confuse light rail riders over 140 years in the future. A 
Arriving at Husky Stadium, remember to pet the dog. We finished Section 2 of the Seattle Olmsted 50. That was a nice walk. I'm going to continue the rest of the Seattle Olmsted 50 in future videos. If you want to see more of my content, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time!